High Tech, Alloy and Doran. Hello, my name is Henry and welcome to the Pink Bike Summer Field Test. This is the Commensal Meta Power 29. Commensal have a lot of heritage and currently occupy a space within the industry as a brand that offers direct to consumer sales and have on-trend Andorran alloy monsters. But how does this bike with 29 inch wheels, 160 mm of travel and an alloy frame stack up against its high-tech carbon counterparts? Commensal claim this is a bike that lets you tackle the climbs in peace with panache and is a bike designed for riding the most technically demanding trails both uphill and downhill. That is of course what every brand says, but are some claims more substantiated than others? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So the frame is alloy, but what about the angles? So this bike uses a 63.5 degree head angle, which is really good for hard charging. And in my opinion, really helps with an e-bike because there's so much weight sitting directly behind the steering axis. Paired to that head angle is a 78 degree seat tube angle to keep things nice and steep and hopefully planted on the climbs. The reach on this bike isn't outrageously large and is relatively short, you could argue, compared to the rear center. Now a small comes in at 430, medium at 450, the large size, which I'm riding here, is 475 and suits me as I'm about six foot and the XL is 25 mil longer at 500 mil. The chain stays on this bike at 453 are longer than a Lord of the Rings marathon. And that's the same throughout all the sizes. One thing that does stick out in regards to the geometry of this bike is a relatively long seat tube. As you can imagine, as seat tubes get steeper and begin to approach 90 degrees, although the distance between the contact points hasn't changed, it does mean that as the saddle comes forward and closer to being directly over the bottom bracket, it is effectively higher. That's why on bikes with modern geometry, it's so important to have short seat tubes and seat posts with large amounts of drop. The Commensal Meta Power uses a relatively straightforward linkage driven single pivot design that delivers 160 mil of rear travel. This bike uses a 170 mil Zeb Ultima on the front. And as you can see, it is an e-bike tune, which basically means it won't work on anything that doesn't have a battery. Joking aside, it just means that it has a slightly firmer compression tune. Now that fork is paired to a familiar face and kindred spirit in the Super Deluxe Ultima at the back. Now this bike uses Shimano's EP8 system and that's combined with a 630 watt hour battery. All of that to deliver 85 of Papa Newton's finest meters of torque. But how does this bike stack up against the others which can cost nearly twice as much? So we have a mountain and we have a bike. Let's put the two together and see how this common cell compares against its contemporaries. All right guys, so those are all the details on the MetaPower. It's time to talk about how this thing rides. And as always, we're gonna hit climbing first. Let's talk about efficiency and that Shimano EP8 motor. Henry, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it, it went okay in terms of traction. Mm -hmm. It was fine, it was adequate, but it didn't have the same supportive feel as something like the Yeti. The Yeti managed to combine traits that I would say really kind of make it conducive to being a, a good e-bike. It's in, a, in kind of in Yeti's own words, it's got that, um, that sixfinity, yeah. which basically means it's a system designed for e-bikes. Right. Something like the Common Cell has a more traditional um, linkage-driven single pivot. Yeah. So it's kind of soft off the top, which isn't such a bad thing descending. But when you've got quite a lot of power, you're trying to charge up some climbs, it's sometimes kind of wallowed a bit when you're on the, on the pedals. And something that we're going to come onto as well when we talk about descending, but something that did undermine the Common Cell somewhat, Mm -hmm. was the 465 millimeter seat I, tube. I honestly, you told me that number, I did not believe him. Mm -hmm. It's a lot worse the steeper the seat tube angle gets. So I was having to slide the saddle back on its rails to get adequate clearance for descending. And then you're trying right. to make tech stuff steep and your weight is actually further rearward. Yeah. And so it kind of was chasing its tail in that regard a bit. It's a good bike and it climbs well, but it does want, it's something that does want to be kind of treated nice, ask nicely, yeah. you, you spin it gently and it'll get you up. Right. It has the grip and all these bikes because you can, you know, you've got 29 inch tires, you can, you've got mm -hmm. big grippy, you got big grippy tires that you're not trying to limit because you have to worry about efficiency. Right. So if you are happy to spin, 
thanks to, you know, it's a 475 mil reach, it's got a really long rear center mm -hmm. and a 78 degree seat tube angle. So it's got quite a lot of stability. If you can just spin it out, you'd be amazed at what you can get up. Right. But compared to something like the Yeti or the Specialized, it's a different beast. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel nearly as supportive. We also have to talk about battery life. So most of these bikes, bar one of them, I did a battery life test basically where I just pedaled up the mountain over and over and over again, <laughs> up the same fire road, up and down it to see how long it would last. For the Commensal, it has an EP8 engine with a 630 watt hour battery and ended up doing 5,792 feet of climbing in only an hour and 57 minutes, I gotta say. I felt, I felt a bit like a superstar. It's <laughs> gravel grinding at its best. Right, yeah. I know. Um, so, there you go. We're up at the top of the mountain, it's time to come back down. When I think of Comencels, I think of sturdy, aluminum bikes, reasonable prices, they just work well. Mm -hmm. Is that true of the Metapower? Yeah, I mean, certainly in the first part, this is the only alloy bike e-bikes and not e-bikes mm -hmm. across the board. You know, it is a very capable descender. However, it does have some quirks, not least as the aforementioned long seat tube. 465 millimeters. They could literally just chop 40 millimeters off. Everything would be fine. <laughs> Who cares? So you've got that to factor. And also it's got a pretty high stack as well. Yeah. So just hopping on the bike, you know, we were joking around the other day, but I was saying that some bikes are rectangles and some bikes are squares. This isn't a nice long low rectangle. This feels like a square. Okay. And you will find yourself using that steerer, going right down to find a, a, better, a better compromise, a better position. What does that translate to on the trail though? Well, that can translate to on the trail is it feels like your center of gravity because your hips, not least because of the high seat tube, mm -hmm. your hips are having to be higher. Mm -hmm. So that's a big factor. And then you can't, when you're leaning the bike, the longer distance between your front axle and your hands can sometimes give a feeling of instability. So you've got two things that aren't going to make you feel stable on this bike. Yeah. You can mitigate them near enough by sliding that stem down yeah. the steerer. Yeah. But hopping on this bike, it doesn't immediately feel like the capable bike that it is. I'm going to stop you there because I know this rider who's pretty quick mm -hmm. and he did a time on the bike. Mm -hmm. It was right. pretty fast. Yeah. Once once you can get it going, yeah. you can. But for people that expect to get this bike direct to consumer, yeah. unbox it you will probably do some fettling. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people found a happier position running that stem slightly low on the steerer. Okay. Matt, what bike was the fastest e-bike of all on the descents? Yeah, the Meta actually went quickest. It was uh, a 253. Okay. And yeah, there are some good things about it for descending for sure. I did have a little bit of trouble with the seat from time right. to time on some of the steeper sections. Yeah. Do you think you could have been faster if that seat post could have been lower or was it more just a comfort thing? I mean, obviously the two are, they're, they're tied together. Yeah, definitely. It did kind of limit me, you know, when I was charging into things, I had a mental note to slow down because I might not get my weight far enough back. Yep. And sometimes I did find that long chain stay just wasn't super balanced with the shorter reach. And I got pitched a little bit forward from time to time. And that could have been, yeah, my weight being forward due to the seat. In the yeah. yeah, it has a 475 mil reach, 453 rear end, but if you can't get far enough back, it's always gonna feel like your center of gravity is forward. Yeah. And if it's already forward, it's gonna wanna go forward more, right? Yeah, that's right. And I tried upping the pressure in the fork too, and that seemed to help a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but it was good at a couple things and it handled the corners pretty well. Okay. And through the chop, it was pretty good. And the big brakes has two 20 rotors front and rear. Yeah, as an e-bike should, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you definitely need those. Yeah. So Matt, you mentioned suspension there a little bit. Henry, I want to go to you. What did you think of this bike's 160 millimeters of rear wheel travel? I thought it was good. It was it was very happy to go into its stroke. Yeah. Now this is something that I noticed across the e-bikes that because of the extra mass of the battery, mm -hmm. you really do notice it. And when you have something that's slacker mm -hmm. and it's happier to sit into its travel, mm -hmm. when you're braking or going through steep stuff fast, you feel less, hmm, like you're less at risk of overloading the mm -hmm. front of the bike. It, it was really salvaged, I think, by, even with the long, you know, the long chain stays, which for me also, I, I would agree with Matt, it did yeah. sometimes put you forward. I think if it had the head angle of the Etty at 64.5, it would have gone into the territory of this is actually being a bit of a problem. I think at 63.5, it actually gave it that sort of plowed downhill bike feel. Yeah. I would only like, for me, I think if we're going to that length, we're having that sort of head angle, why not make it a 480, a 485 front end? It's got that steep seat tube angle to give you a decent effective top tube. 
and it would help it, I think, be balanced a bit more with mm -hmm. that long rear end. Interesting. That brings us to component highs and lows. Henry, you're awfully positive today. You're gonna to do the pros, let's hear it. Yeah, so some things I liked on the comments I'll spec would be the high-end rock shocks throughout. So you have that Zeb Ultimate paired to the Super Deluxe Ultimate. And why that's important is the Super Deluxe Ultimate compared to the Select model basically has external compression adjustment. Why would that be more important on a bike like this, Henry? Because on a bike like this, which basically is very active in the initial part of the travel, mm -hmm. you can almost feel a bit too active. What you want to do is have, for me, I, the way the bike tracks is super important, and having the external compression adjustment just to actually slow down the compression on the initial stroke, it just makes the bike, to me, feel more stable. Now, another thing I really liked is 220mm rotors front and back. We spoke about this before, mm -hmm. but if any product managers are watching out there, there's no reason on a bike that weighs 55 pounds, you know, putting a 180mm or a 200mm rotor on the back of the common cell would be like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Right. It's going to do yeah. absolutely. Just give it the big brakes for goodness sake. And um, it's also got an integrated alloy bar. Should yeah. you want to be trying to tame that bird's nest up front, it does make the cable routing a bit neater. Yeah. Okay. Those are the positives. Matt? Yeah, we did have a couple negatives. Uh, one was definitely the rattly motor. I think it's the gearing in the, the freewheel in the, in the motor mechanism. As you're descending, if that power is not being turned forward, it just rocks back and forth. Right. And it makes a lot of noise. So noisy. I did a ton of climbing, which means I did a ton of descending. And the whole time, it's not just the meta power that's guilty of this, but the whole time you're coming down, it's just Definitely Super threw annoying. me for a bolt check and I was like, wow, what is going on here? Yeah. One other thing that I want to mention is I pulled the seat post out for you guys to do some maintenance and geez, that seat post, first of all, it was real hard to get out. The yeah. tolerances are way too tight and it just tore that seat post up. Super scratched up. I don't know if there's a burr down there or whatever, but the tolerances are definitely not good enough in there. We're on to models and pricing. And if you go to the Come and Sell website, there are a whole bunch of different meta powers to pick from. We're not gonna confuse ourselves here. We're only gonna talk about two bikes, one, the one we have, and actually the most expensive option. For $8,000 American, which is only $1,000 more than this bike, you can get the same frame with Olin suspension and an Axis drivetrain and seat post, which seems like a pretty damn good deal, doesn't it? Now it's direct to consumer, of course, but. but I mean, from a lot of the bikes on our field test, the non-e bike version, yeah. around six. Yeah. And they don't come with Axif. That Kinevo SL, it's $15,000. And I know S works, carbon, all the things, Axis, all the things. But if you're okay with an aluminum frame, well, for eight grand. With, all you need with this, I mean, for the seven grand one, get two of them, a hacksaw, Take that seat tube down, Bob's right. the cool fannies you want, you've got yourself an absolute banger. Okay, on to pros and cons. This time you're gonna get the good stuff, Matt. Let's hear it. Okay, so yeah, it's got a pretty solid spec. Really good suspension, really solid wheels, and those big brakes like we talked about before. Mm -hmm. And it's also a single pivot that's linkage driven, so there are a couple pivots to maintain, but this thing should be pretty bulletproof. In terms of the cons, I mean, we've already alluded to the problems with the seat tube. Mm, too long, and it just eats seat posts. Eats them for dinner. Right. And similarly, you know, although this bike, as Matt pointed out, is pretty good, it represents good value, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, you could say little things like that might become a little bit, a little bit tiresome if they kept kept appearing in various places over the bike. Yeah, there's no denying that the frame isn't as nicely finished as the other bikes. Yeah. Like price aside, I know it's a great deal, but when you want to look at the details, it's it's definitely a little rougher than the Yeti and the, the Specialized and yeah. the Norco 2, which all cost more money. Yeah, totally. Another thing that might be on the cons list would be, and it kind of mixes into what Matt said, some people will want an e-bike specific system. They'll look at a single a single pivot and say, oh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, although this, the single pivot does deliver really good traction, small but particularly, it does wallow a bit when you're climbing. Right. So it's kind of gives one hand and takes the other. Okay. Some people might want something a bit more, like I said, a ground up e-bike as opposed to a regular bike that feels like it's had a battery incorporated. Right, that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, we're getting close to the end of this review and that means that we have to pick the type of rider that this thing suits and the type of mountain and terrain that the Meta Power suits. Henry, what type of terrain does this bike belong on? This bike is really good at going fast. Okay. And it's one of those things, you know, it is a bit of a sledgehammer, but when you've got a big, thing, a big hammer, everything looks like nails and you'll find yourself just going flat out as much as possible. It's not for someone, I don't think that likes that nuanced kind of Alpine single track. It's for somebody that I think, yeah, again, if we can ignore the seat tube, right. that wants to kind of replace a downhill shuttle. Yeah, that makes sense to me. That's why I figured it. Matt, what would you say? Yeah, I would agree with the types of terrain that you can ride this bike on. And it obviously went the fastest. It's probably for the person who maybe has another bike in the fleet and they want to add something that's a little more budget friendly. So that is it for Comencel's Meta Power. Stay tuned for a whole bunch more reviews, the impossible climb, and of course, the Huck to Flat. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those, and we'll see you next time around. Thank you.